Today, we will be talking about diversity and representation within companies, especially when it comes to being at the table within marketing and communications. I'm your host, Tawana Schreeder, and I have with me today, Kevin Davis, who is the Senior Director of Marketing and Brand Strategy at Erie Family Health Center. Welcome, Kevin. Thanks for having me. So let's just dive in. I want to talk about the importance of marketing of, of DEI in marketing and communications. Why is it so important that we have that diverse representation? Well, I think first and foremost, it's just the right thing to do um, to make sure that consumers see themselves in the brands or, the, or inside the organizations um, that they're a part of. Um, you want to make sure that you have authentic connection uh, with with your audience <clears throat> or your uh, your target demographic. Um, and again, why not? Why, why is it such a difficult thing to do? Right. Um, why does it have to be a strategy? It should just be something that we do naturally because we're going to do the right thing. Right. Right. So when we talk about, um, you know, diversity in marketing and communications, when it comes to making sure we are representing our, our various consumers, um, what happens when it is an insensitive marketing campaign? Well, I think a number of things happen. Um, consumers lose trust in the brand. Um, there's a negative, a negative image that's cast over the brand. There's lots of doubt. Um, and then it, there's also the piece that a lot of people forget, and that's the people that work there. Mm -hmm. So when there's a campaign that's insensitive or something that did not go according to plan, People that work there are impacted by that as well. They're also looking at it as, is this the company um, that I work for? And that I want to be affiliated yeah. with? Yeah. Now now there's this 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 kind of assessment of our values mm -hmm. aligned, but um, it can just spiral out of control. Uh, we've seen a number of companies have, have terrible experiences with campaigns, um, and it just, it just snowballs. Um, it causes everyone to look at, like, why did this happen? Yeah. Who approved this? Right. And is this where I want to spend my money? That's right. something that in my household, we kind of align with these silent protests when I look at these different brands. And people are like, oh, that's a big company. You can't, mm -hmm. you can't protest or boycott them. And I'm like, well, these are my dollars. And right. I'm choosing not to support this company anymore because of this thing that they did. So, I, you know, people like me will, will support or, or won't support with our dollars when we see, you know, some of the campaigns or things that happen uh, with mm -hmm. some of these brands. Right. And I think it's more than just being at the table because mm -hmm. sometimes we'll be at the table and it's not Absolutely. just in marketing and communications. We will be at the table in a variety of roles and companies, but are we heard? Mm -hmm. And I think that's the next, that's the evolution of the inclusion. Yeah. You invite me into the room. Yes. I'm at the table, mm -hmm. but are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. Are you hearing my feedback and suggestions and recommendations and then putting them into action? So let's talk quickly. Well, not quickly, but let's talk about some marketing for pause. Mm -hmm. Um, Juneteenth. Yep. And <laughs> When I saw your post on Facebook about the Walmart um, uh, brand of mm -hmm. ice cream for Juneteenth, yep. then we saw the Dollar Tree um, release of their Juneteenth products. Mm -hmm. And I was like, but why is it so wrong? Because yep. we have been buying these products on Amazon and Etsy mm -hmm. for years. And now that Walmart and Dollar Tree are in play, what's, what's the problem? Yeah, well, I think it 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 goes back, you know, it goes well, you know, way far back beyond Juneteenth, and we look at how these companies t treat employees. We look mm -hmm. at how they impact smaller businesses. You think about um, the perception that Walmart has when they move into a community; they will undercut mm -hmm. a number of their businesses, and so they go out of business, and now they're the only company in town. And some in some instances, they've raised the prices back up, so right. they kind of lure it in with the lower prices. And then you start to look at the labor issue. Um, I, I can't remember what the percentage is, but um, I, there's some ridiculous number like 60% of Walmart employees are on some sort of public assistance. Mm -hmm. And so it goes into that and uh, we hear about um, discrimination, like all of these things come into play. And then on the Dollar Tree side, 
you hear about the how they impact lower income communities, mm -hmm. where the perception is the prices are cheap, mm -hmm. but when you look at the 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 quality. the quality of it or the quantity, even though it's a dollar, if you went somewhere else and you did the math, you're paying more a dollar tree than you are somewhere else. You have all of those factors that are at play, and then they launched Juneteenth products, and I hate it when companies launch themed products mm -hmm. for an observance mm -hmm. or a holiday for the most part, uh, because it is opportunistic mm -hmm. and it seems, <clears throat> it seems disingenuous. And so the situation with the, the, the ice cream at, at Walmart, um, was that it was like, what does Juneteenth flavor taste like? That was the whole thing. Like, what does that mean? Watermelon. I don't know. Well, I think I it was, like, it was like some kind of cheesecake. That's what it was because there was there was a black owned brand mm -hmm. that actually had the same flavor, and everybody's like, "Well, go buy her brand instead mm -hmm. of the Walmart brand." But what was interesting is I, I know a few folks, and they're like, "There's actually a black person that was the buyer for that," and so that adds another layer to the conversation. So earlier you were talking about are we at the table and are we mm -hmm. being heard, but are the people at the table? the people that have the best interest of the community mm -hmm. in mind that's being represented here. And so with Walmart, it was, it seemed very opportunistic because we haven't heard much from the company in mm -hmm. terms of Juneteenth support or any, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever else they pop up with this, this ice cream. And so people are like, well, they did the same thing previously with pride month. And it was like, well, that's kind of different. You know, that's not the, um, like the commemoration of the end of slavery. Right. It's different, but I still, I'm still not a big fan of that. Right. So, um, and then Dollar Tree had the, the line of, um, like party favors. And it was like, it's the freedom for me. That was like on the <laughs> napkins. And it was like, so now we're, we're like using AAV to sell Juneteenth products. It always seems like they were mocking yeah. the culture. Yeah. Um, because you know, even though Juneteenth, I mean, it's been around for and celebrated in yeah. the South for years, yeah. it's fairly new to us. Mm -hmm. And I just, I really want to go on record and say what bothered me about the Dollar Tree um, thing more than just it's the, you know, <laughs> <laughs> for me, it's it was the fact that no one even did the research no. around Juneteenth. No. And, you know, it's you know, these products are black, green, and red when that does not represent Juneteenth. Absolutely. And that's what bothered me. Yeah. It's like they, they just kind of conflated Kwanzaa, Pan-African flag, yep. like all the black people stuff. Here y'all go. We're yep. going to put, turn it into Juneteenth. And there you go. So you can't say we didn't offer something or for people who don't know better, like, right. oh, these are some nice decorations and we may want to do something to the office. Some, you know, mm -hmm. everyone doesn't have ill intent, but you still have to be responsible for the impact. Right. So it, it was very lazy. Um, you know, and there's a lot of education that needs to happen in the community. And we, we chat about this briefly, but you know, um, the colors of Juneteenth mm -hmm. are red, white, and blue because it, it is, um, representative of the flag of Texas because right. this was a Texas thing originally. Right. And so people don't know that there's a flag, mm -hmm. you know, they'll use the uh, Pan-African flag, you know, the red, black, and right. green. I've seen some, um, some other imagery used. And so it's, if we're going to honor the observance, let's mm -hmm. make sure we're using the proper imagery, the proper context. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot, a lot of education that needs to happen all right. around, but you expect larger companies to make sure that they aren't making any missteps. Right. But that's not the and case. And that buyer missed a key opportunity, yep. not only to educate himself mm -hmm. or themselves, but to educate the store, the Walmart yep. brand. Um, but we talked earlier about who did do it well, mm -hmm. and that was Target. Absolutely. They didn't promote um, Juneteenth items. Right. They promoted and highlighted Black-owned brands. Yep. And I love that because yeah. I'm always in the Target app. Mm -hmm. And when I saw, and they have a category. Yep. And when mm -hmm. I saw that, I was like, okay. I mean, it was, you know, really promoted during, during Dream Team. Mm -hmm. It would pop up, 
but you saw the education of these are the brands yeah. that who we are highlighting, who we are promoting. And they've, they have a pretty good track record. Um, I, you know, full disclaimer, when I first moved to Chicago, that was the first place I worked, mm -hmm. um, was at Target. And so uh, working there, you got to see all the different brands mm -hmm. that were brought in. And they always highlight it. Typically, when you go into a retail store, you'll see a corner, you know, the ethnic hair, hair care mm -hmm. section. And it's like a four-foot section with three shelves. But I think Target was one of the first retailers that had a full, yes. full row of things. And they would always highlight, I remember they, they would highlight um, uh, Richard Ludennis over at Sundial Brands mm -hmm. um, slash Shea Moisture, mm -hmm. um, Lisa Price over at Carol's mm -hmm. Daughter, um, uh, Miss Jessie's, mm -hmm. um, the sisters that were over that. Yeah. They always gave you a sort of a narrative of these are the black brands you should know. These are the people. And then they expanded their men's section. Mm -hmm. And then it was... Um, um, the brother who started Bevel, I forgot, I'm drawing a blank on his name, but he started Bevel and ended up being bought out by Gillette for like some ridiculous amount of okay. money. But they've always done a good job. And so thinking about in February, when you went into Target, there was a Black History Month section mm -hmm. and it was black owned brands. But then on the sides of the displays, it was black history. Mm -hmm. And then Women's History Month, it was women's history, you know, brands that supported and represented women's history and, and um, you know, just just different figures. Mm -hmm. Pride Month, the same thing. Juneteenth came up. It's all these different designers, mm -hmm. brands, um, and it, it felt authentic. And so it made me think, how can Target always get this right, right and everyone gets it so wrong? And it's because they don't they don't sell products that kind of um that turn observances of holidays into like commodities. Mm. They'll promote the people that are right. representative of those observances and holidays. Let them shine. And you go and it's easy to find everything. Mm -hmm. And a lot of brands don't do that. It's lazy. Yeah. And it's, if I'm the, the person of color and leadership or have some decision-making authority at a brand, at a company that is not really diverse and inclusive, they're going to just trust me mm -hmm. and I may not be the best representation. Right. Like Kevin's black. Here we go. Kevin said, let's do this Juneteenth ice cream. That sounds like a great idea. Kevin mm -hmm. said it. So that must mean we're okay. So you have to check who's at the table. Mm -hmm. Are they the right person? But then you have to test, mm -hmm. test things out. Like think about it, my job now. Um, when we updated our brand standards mm -hmm. to make sure we talk about our patients a certain way, our employees a certain way, mm -hmm. we went to the DEI committee. Mm -hmm. And say, we're too close to this. How does this look? Okay, cool. And we tested out a couple partners and they're like, okay, cool. Companies have to do that same thing. Yeah. They can't just go by who's in the room and say, well, we all have the best interest mm -hmm. and intent. So it must work. Like right. intent doesn't always mean success. But again, you have to be responsible for the impact. Right. Um, another reason why I love Target, I think the Ulta collaboration yep. or partnership was the best because Ulta also does that. Yep. You can go on their website. I'm, I'm an Ulta fan, mm -hmm. but you can go on their website and they will have a category black owned yep. brands and they will tell you about the founders and they will tell you about the products. Mm -hmm. And I love that. And I, I just thought it was just, it just made sense. On that note, I spent a lot of time in Ulta and Sephora because of my wife <laughs> uh, being a makeup artist in and what, what I appreciate is having a, a young black daughter mm -hmm. is going into Target, going into Ulta. We spend a lot of time at Ulta. Um, and even Sephora. And she can walk in and she can now see herself mm -hmm. in these brands and thinking right. about my sisters who are, you know, I'm 43. So they're older than me. And they're just now right. being able to walk into place that their whole life. They didn't see themselves anywhere. Exactly. They have to fit in somewhere mm -hmm. or feel less than because what their image or likeness wasn't, I wouldn't even say the dominant display, it wasn't there at all. Right. So it says a lot to me as a, a black man and a father of mm -hmm. a black daughter to see this is the world she's grown up in that's right. much more diverse and inclusive. Right. And she doesn't inadvertently develop like a inf inferiority mm -hmm. complex because it, she sees herself exactly. everywhere. And I think that's important. Representation matters. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be matters. on an ice cream box. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So let's talk about some other campaigns. Dove's Real Beauty Campaign, which started out successful and then failed. Mm -hmm. So why did it fail? 
because pe- we love seeing, okay, Dove is taking this intentional stance and they have a real strategy around um, inclusion mm-hmm. and representation. So how did it start out so positive and then fail? I think there's a couple of things. If I'm, if I remember in the campaign um, correctly, there were two things that stood out. One was there was a video of women kind of taking off mm-hmm. like their tops. Um, and I, that sounds terrible, but that's, it's like take off, <laughs> you have on a shirt and take right. off a sweater. And it's one image, the way it was chopped seemed like the person went from black to white. Right. And that wasn't the case. The, the larger context was there were women of all race and races and ethnicities right. that would you would see pop up when the shirts came off, but they, they shared a snippet. And no one thought that doesn't look right because it seems like I'm taking off this black persona mm-hmm. or character mm-hmm. or whatever costume. And now I'm this white woman and it came off wrong and it just spiraled out of control. And that was a video that they posted. It was a snippet of their larger campaign that they posted and it just went left. Mm-hmm. But then there was another part of their campaign that had great intentions. Again, remember Intent doesn't matter. You got to be responsible for impact as well. They said, well, we're going to change our bottles of the products. And they were in different shapes. So they were supposed to be representative of the different uh, body types of women. So they were like taller shampoo bottles. Some were a little bit stockier. Some were a little stouter. And people were like, why? Why? See, now you're doing too much. You over index on it. Just the bottles were fine. You know, it's it's a campaign that just needed to be be tweaked a little bit. Mm -hmm. We didn't ask for these bottles to be these different shapes and sizes. But then what happens is, you know, if you're in production, you can't have that many variables of sizes Mm -hmm. and products because that means eventually something's gonna be short. So we're gonna always get one size of these bottles. You're Mm -hmm. never gonna see your bottle. Because the supply or people may have bought it. So then you say, well, why doesn't this store carry the taller bottles? Why aren't these bottles wider? It becomes like this whole thing that didn't, that no one asked for. So it just went left. And I think they ended up pulling some of those ads because they just couldn't pull it back. Right. The backlash was too intense. So let's talk about a different topic, DEI and brand marketing. Should companies actually be taking a stance, a public stance, and speaking out on topics such as DEI and, most importantly, racism or social justice? Uh, Absolutely. If they care about their employees. If they are authentic. If they are authentic. Um, I think, yeah, I I feel like, um, you know, I just did a talk about this last week, and two things kind of jumped out. Um, There was a survey Uh, I can't remember, I think it was MSNBC, where it's like 60% of employees uh, supported their leadership or their company speaking out on political Mm -hmm. and social justice Mm -hmm. issues. And that speaks volumes. You know, Mm -hmm. I think we're officially gone from the days of you just go to work and you go home Mm -hmm. and work is work and whatever the company leadership believes is is, is separate. Mm -hmm. And those days are gone Um, because you want to work somewhere that represents your interests and we've seen what happens when companies don't have a soul or a mm-hmm. backbone it impacts their their staff members inadvertently right. or directly and so i think that companies should speak out um just to make sure that they're they're representing the interests mm-hmm. of, of their people yeah. and if something is wrong it's okay to use your voice and your dollars to say that um, it's a lot harder for me as Kevin, the individual to, you know, go make some noise. But if Nike or mm-hmm. Coca-Cola says, Hey, we're going to take a stance on human trafficking. Or mm-hmm. We're going to take a stance on the, the pay inequity, you know, among women workers, that's more likely to get the press, mm-hmm. um, you know, the, the press releases, the, the media attention, um, our staff is going to feel better that we actually care, but you also have to couple that with with action as mm-hmm. well. Yeah. One thing that came to, <clears throat> that came to mind comes to mind to me is last year um, at my job uh, we, we were we were 
reached out to by this organization that we're a part of and say, hey, we are going to boycott Facebook um, ad spending because of the, some of the restrictions that it, they had and some of the limitations they were putting on advertisers and um, some of the ads that they allowed. And so we said, sign us up 100%. You know, mm-hmm. we want to speak with our voice and we're going to go in as a coalition. We couldn't get that ad produced uh, because everyone was afraid to put their name on the record. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was only us and a couple other organizations that said, we'll do it, put our logo here. Others were like, yeah. And so it's one of those things of private support is okay sometimes, but mm-hmm. you got to couple that with that public support as well um, to show us where your values are, um, how closely aligned are these causes to your mission mm-hmm. and vision, and are they representative of your employees? It speaks a lot about your culture yeah. or what you will speak up yeah. for um, and against. And so I think that companies should speak yeah. up within reason as long as it's authentic. And also it needs to match what actually goes on inside the organization. So yeah. you can't go hard for um, spending on diversity advertising or something like that to attract more mm-hmm. talent. Mm-hmm. if you don't have supports in place for the actual diverse talent that's already yeah. in your organization. So you have to make sure you're not over-promising something that's not representative yeah. of the true culture. I, I told a story the last time, well, previously, about my previous employer and how they did, you know, show that they championed their diverse workforce. Mm-hmm. They advocated for them and they supported them. Um, they were huge on ERGs, employee mm-hmm. resource groups, and um, you know, celebrating um, the various cultures. You know, we would have, we would do, you know, um, Black History Month mm-hmm. activities and Women's History Month activities and things like that. And when George Floyd was executed and um, grocery stores were looted and vandalized and people didn't have, you know, anywhere to go and grocery shop. Mm -hmm. And we're on the west side of Chicago. I live on the south side and I know the impacts it had on the south side. Yeah. And I can only imagine how, you know, those employees from the south and west side of Chicago, how they felt Mm -hmm. having to go to work. Mm -hmm. But seeing the organization just embrace them and support them. And I asked one of my VPs, I said, how does the board of trustees feel about us putting Black Lives Matter Mm -hmm. on the building? And they were like, they're supportive. Mm -hmm. Because I wanted to know, were we losing any trustees? Were they really supportive? Because that was important to me. And being at an organization now that is taking that same stance mm-hmm. and supporting black and brown communities and social social justice issues, you know, I want to be a part of that organization. I want to be a part of that culture. But I also want to have a voice mm-hmm. and be heard. That um, reminds me of um, when I was searching for roles a few years ago. And, you know, I kind of made this decision internally that wherever I would work, when I get an interview, I'm going to grill them on um, diversity, equity, and inclusion for a couple of reasons. One, just because I get tired of being the only black, Mm. the first black, or one of few black people Mm -hmm. in marketing or and or leadership mm-hmm. inside these organizations. So I want to know, what are you doing to change this? Um, I'm going to do what I need to do in any mm-hmm. organization, but I don't want to always feel like I'm starting or fighting. Right. And the other part of that is as a marketing leader, I need to know what I'm walking into because I'm always by default going to lead with a, you know, with, with diversity and inclusion in mind. And because I'm a marketer. Mm-hmm. So, and I have the keys to some of the most powerful channels, our mm-hmm. website, our marketing collateral, our community engagement team, all these things are at my disposal. And if I don't have the support of leadership to do what I need to do, which is authentic to me, mm-hmm. um, then I don't need to work there. And so it was that conscious decision of coming into the door, 
I see that you all aren't doing as much as you want to do, but you've done some things. So that was huge. You've already done some things. There isn't, there isn't mm -hmm. just a strategy. Mm -hmm. There are some actual deliverables, but you're saying we have room to do whatever it is you want to do here as a member of leadership team and as a member, you know, as leading marketing. Mm -hmm. And that was so powerful for me. It made the decision very easy to work, you know, to, to go join right. my organization right. because I didn't have to take off different hats and put right. them on or feel like I can't, I can't be as uh, diverse and inclusive as I want because it may rump, ruffle some feathers. And they're like, no, do what you need to do. We're good. Anybody else that's not on board with that, we'll deal with them. You do what you need to do because that's what we need to do to move forward. Yeah. Representation matters. Yep. I will say that time and time again. And as we, you know, veterans of the workforce mm -hmm. and, you know, new um, employees coming into the workforce, representation matters and asking the question about culture mm -hmm. is important. But I want to thank you for joining me today. Um, Kevin, I hope that we can continue this conversation another time. Absolutely. But that is all for today. Join me next time on DIY DEI.